between failed attempts to troll Tesla, and the range anxiety associated with electric cars, the Nissan Leaf really doesn't receive the credit it deserves. I mean, don't get me wrong. It is kind of ugly and looks like the bug-eyed bastard child that would result from a Lotus banging an early Honda Civic hatchback, but that's okay. In the end, the Nissan LEAF has become the world's best-selling, highway-capable electric car, with more than a quarter million examples sold in the time it's been on the market. So, despite all the negativity it gets, it really is an iconic car. And, that icon is about to go through a generational shift that will bring it up to speed and ready to compete with cars like the Tesla Model 3 and Chevy Bolt. As of now, we have almost no idea of what it will look like outside of a teaser image of the headlight that Nissan released a few months ago, but Nissan has just announced that it will be one of the first models to get its new Pro Pilot driver assist feature. Details are scant as of this writing, and Nissan has yet to even announce a rough time frame for the next Gen Leaf's arrival, but if you want an idea of how the Pro Pilot system works, you can look back to the piloted drive 1.0 concept from 2015, which pretty much handled autonomous driving in heavy highway traffic. That's pretty much what the next Gen Leaf will be able to accomplish as well. It should function similarly to that of Tesla's Autopilot, GM's Super Cruise, and Audi's Traffic Jam Assist feature. The question is whether or not you'll feel like you're being driven by a skilled driver as Nissan described it when debuting that aforementioned concept. Nissan hasn't gone so far as to tell us just what kind of hardware it is using to make the semi-autonomous tech work, but the last piloted drive concept was equipped with 12 cameras, 5 radar sensors, 4 laser scanners, and a few ultrasonic sensors. If I had to guess, I would say more advanced versions of this technology will probably be hidden under the skin of the next gen leaf, but there's something more important in play here. See, Nissan will be able to use data recorded from the next gen leaf and its semi-autonomous technology to improve its upcoming, fully autonomous system, which should make its way into Nissan's cars by 2023. That's just six short years away, but technology can advance a lot in that period of time as well. So, the ProPilot software in the next gen Leaf is the first stage of a few in the automaker's plan to bring autonomous cars to the masses. The real question, however, is whether or not Nissan will bring its fully autonomous tech to customers directly or if it'll follow in Ford's footsteps when it launches its self-driving cars solely for ride-sharing services in 2021. For that, we'll just have to wait, but something tells me Nissan isn't going to fall behind the rest of the big players in the game. For now. There's no date set in stone for the next Gen Leaf's debut, with the official word from Nissan being that it's coming soon. With that in mind, Nissan will likely debut the next Gen Leaf later this year with either SEMA or the Los Angeles Auto Show being the most likely candidates for show appearances before it goes on sale as a 2018 model. Then again, Nissan could host its own event this summer or fall to debut the new lead as well so it's really up in the air at this point. The current LEAF is powered by a subpar in this market 30 kWh battery that's good for 107 miles worth of range on a full charge. Of course, this wasn't always subpar, but now that other automakers have jumped into the all-electric game, the LEAF is in dire need of replacement. There's no word on how big of a battery the next gen LEAF will get, but the word is that it'll offer up some 200 miles of range per charge, which would point to a battery size around 60 kWh or so, depending on the curb weight of the car itself. Based on recent spy shots that we have received, it will also be much more attractive and may even grow a bit. It will still maintain the hatchback look, but it will lose those bug-eyed headlights and will look much more modern than the current model. 
Check back soon for our speculative review based on the spy shots you've seen in this article. The XESV Project 8 will be the most powerful road legal car in Jaguar's history, packing a supercharged 5.0-liter V8, pushing 441 kilowatts to all four wheels. All that power is being transferred via a specially tuned version of the 8-speed ZF Auto which features an all XE variant. Built by Jags and House Special Vehicle Operations SVO, the Project 8 is a British manufacturer's rocking sequel to the F-Type Project 7. If this sounds like something you would want to add to your garage, you're probably already too late, with Jaguar only building 300 cars, all in left-hand drive. Jaguar hasn't released any performance figures, but you'd be safe to bet it'll sprint to 100 km per hour from a standstill in 3.5 seconds or less. The four-door brawler is angled directly battling the Porsche 911 GT3 and BMW M4 GTS. The car has been tested and developed on the Nürburgring, with our spy photographer snapping pics of the car just days ahead of its reveal. Dynamic changes over the standard XE are likely to consist of beefed-up brakes, more focused suspension, a faster steering rack, wider tires, and stickier rubber. Oh, and that huge wing hoisted atop the boot. The Project 8 also receives visual tweaks with flared arches, and more aggressive bumper treatments. It's also likely the Project 8 will have gone on a diet, ditching kilos compared to its less powerful brothers. More power and less weight is a tried and true recipe. The car will be revealed at the Goodwood Festival of Speed, 29 6 February 7, 2017, and is rumored to be making a run up Lord March's famed driveway. Something has been going on in the streets of Carlton. Maybe you noticed it while rushing to catch a movie at Cinema Nova or after polishing off a slice of cake in Bernetti. Forget the Bermuda Triangle. This is the Elgin Rectangle. The mystery began a few months ago, when people parking in the area realized something weird was happening, the remote control on the car keys had stopped working. Visitors to Carlton would spend chunks of time waiting for the beep, flash or clunk to signify their chariot had been successfully protected. No luck. Was it dodgy batteries? The Nebjigen was doing a nice business out of it. But no, drive around the corner and the electronics would start working again. The Enigma seemed to be focused in one small pocket, Elgin Street between Drummond Street and Ligon Street. Nothing as serious as ships disappearing into thin air but still pretty airy. What could be causing this disturbance? Events of a couple of weeks ago really kicked off the theories. A patient at Carlton Dental walked into the reception to say that his car wouldn't start. After three hours the car had to be towed away to a mechanic. When it arrived, they found nothing wrong with it. It had to be linked to the keys. Perhaps it was caused by the mobile phone towers on top of the shopping center across the road. Or maybe an enterprising thief was jamming the signal of the keys as part of a break-in spree. A more scandalously inclined theorist suggested it might be police listening in on a bunch of mafiosi plotting a drug deal. This is Carlton after all. We've been asking more questions and it's become much more noticeable in the last week, said Dr. Barry Johnson, who has run Carlton Dental for 25 years. No one would believe that there was an interference with our car locks. Across the road at Elgin Lotto and Tobacconist, Mal Verk said he noticed when more people than usual were coming and asking him to replace their car remote batteries. That's when we realized that actually it's the frequency that is jamming up, so if they go a block that way or that way it works, he said. Mark Johns, at Elgin Printing, said he noticed the rise in car alarms going off, it's not coincidental, there's just too many. He said. So who do you call in this situation? The police have bigger things to deal with. The council didn't know how to help. The power company laughed it off. After the age visited the site last week to check if the problem was real, 
It was, a call was placed to the Australian Communications and Media Authority. A field officer subsequently paid the area a visit with a spectrum analyzer, which found a constant signal at the frequency of 434 MHz the same used by car key remotes. After walking around with the analyzer, it appeared the strongest reading was coming from the doorway at the dentist. The culprit? It wasn't a frequency jammer or clandestine radio broadcast but a doorbell. A fault with a transmitter used as part of a doorbell sensor at Carlton Dental had knocked out car key remotes across the whole street. ACMA said this kind of thing doesn't happen very often but can sometimes affect other devices like garage remotes. A few years ago in the US, homeowners in California started noticing that their garage doors had stopped opening remotely after a nearby military base began testing radios on the same frequency. While he's happy the mystery has been solved, the kicker is that Dr. Johnson provided the original tip-off about the problem. It's us of all people, he said. I knew something around the area must have been causing the problem but I had no idea it was ours. Now it's up to me to fix it.